What's the best form of paint protection? Is it a wax, a paint sealant, a ceramic coating, or a graphene coating? Well, you guys are about to find out by watching this video. So what's up? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer. So you guys, my viewers, often ask me, Pan, what's the best form of paint protection? Well, we're gonna have to talk about the differences between these four types of paint protectants for you guys to make a better choice that is going to be based on your needs and wants, your detailing experience, your budget, and also your expectations. So essentially, I've been detailing cars for roughly 24 years now by the time this video is released, uh, so almost a quarter century, and I've seen things evolve quite a bit, right, in the car detailing space, and we're flooded with thousands and thousands of products from hundreds and hundreds of different brands, and uh, hopefully my videos help you navigate in the crazy detailing world, and hopefully I can transmit my passion and knowledge over to you guys. So. We have waxes, we have paint sealants in different forms, right? Liquid, spray, or paste. We have ceramic coatings and the newcomer, a graphene coating. So in order to better understand which is the best one, we first have to understand what the differences are between them. So I did a video in February 2020 uh, explaining what the differences were between waxes, sealants, and ceramic coatings. Uh, graphene coatings weren't uh, really existing back then. Now they're a thing right now. So I'm kind of doing this uh, more up-to-date video, and since that time, we've added uh, over 300,000 new subscribers, by the way, so welcome to each and every one of you guys. So waxes, they've been uh, pretty much on the market for many, many decades. I mean, my father was using that, probably my grandfather as well. They're carnauba-based, which means they're plant-based, right? From the carnauba plants in Brazil, that's where the uh, most purest and best forms of carnauba are available, and basically those plants secrete that on their leaves to protect against the sun's UV rays. It gives hydrophobic properties as well, basically to protect the leaves against all that. So they found a way to incorporate that for vehicles because on modern cars, we have the clear coat, right? That's the shiny part on top of your paint. And it basically has UV blockers and UV inhibitors. But over time, that clear coat will eventually diminish and you're losing the performance of those UV blockers, which are normally on the top portion of the uh, that clear coat. And so over time, you're getting fading oxidation. Uh, think how obvious it is on red cars that are super old, they become pink right over time. That's because of the sun's damaging UV rays and all the oxidation that happened on the surface. So what you want to do is give the clear coat a boost by adding a paint protectant. So carnauba waxes typically are the forms that last the least. So they'll be roughly one to three months of durability on your paint. And they typically are available in three formats. So the uh, classic format, if I look at this uh, high-end Swiss vac carnauba wax, is through here, the paste form. So this is inside a jar. So these are the, uh, well, most sought after from collectors and people who enjoy basically a warm finish or a warm glow, because all of these have a different type of finish that they give to the paint. So it also depends on what look you're looking for. So waxes, typically when they're carnauba based with some high grade carnauba in there, will last typically a one to three months. So we're not really looking for long-term durability. What we look for in waxes is easy on, easy off, but mainly that showroom shine, that deep warm glow or gloss so uh, basically it's the richer looking as far as gloss is concerned and again you have it in paste form they uh, made the uh, waxes available in liquid form as well like this uh, pinnacle liquid sovereign and or sovereign and you also have the uh, spray category so this is the turtle wax ice spray wax they're pretty much the originators of the spray waxes in the uh, detailing world as far as i know and so uh, basically you get all the benefits, so UV protection, all that kind of stuff. This maybe has a bit more chemical resistance compared to other more traditional forms of waxes, but these are three main types of waxes that you can apply on top of your vehicle. Waxes have the benefit of being very, very easy to apply. Uh, a lot of them are affordable, but don't get me wrong, like sky's the limit in the car detailing world, right? And uh, you get waxes in the several hundreds of dollars worth, some are even over a thousand bucks. Uh, and so depending on which version you're getting, so what you're aiming at once Again, uh, if you ask me, in my opinion, basically it's for the gloss and that warm feel you're getting, that organic, natural look to the shine. So if that's what you want, uh, a wax is probably the one for you. And also there are a lot of people who still enjoy the process. So a lot of people ask me, is waxing dead? No, wax is not dead. Uh, a lot of people still enjoy the process of uh, taking a few hours to wash their cars. And once it's dry, basically you're hand applying it. So you're using that either circular motion or straight lines. Don't worry about it, by the 
away. There's no abrasives in Pure Carnuba Wax, so it doesn't matter if you're applying in circle uh, motion or up and down and left to right. Since there's no abrasives, you're not going to scratch your paint, so don't overthink the moment. Uh, it's not like a compound or polish that's very different, or a cleaner wax, for example, that might have a light abrasives inside. But if you have a pure wax, it doesn't matter how you apply it. Uh, so yeah, so a lot of people just enjoy the process. Uh, they connect with their vehicle that way. It's soothing and relaxing, just like I hope detailing is for you guys, because I know that's what it is for me, a soothing and relaxing experience. And so the wax was good, but uh, they noticed over time that a lot of people were complaining about the uh, not too long durability that you get with it. Again, typically one to three months. And so they decided, or the industry decided to come up with a synthetic variant called paint sealants. And again, you're going to have those in three different versions. So you get them in pastes like these. So this is Fuso Coat. This is a very high durable one. So this lasts up to 12 months. You're easily uh, going to get in real world applications, uh, probably six to eight months or more out of this. Of course, uh, real world durability depends on many things like application, your experience, what prep you did before, uh, which environment you live in, what conditions the car is exposed to. Is it a daily driver? Is it a weekend uh, driven car only? Is it kept in a garage? Is it kept outside in the elements all the time? Basically a lot of variables. That's not what we're here to talk about today. Uh, but basically in paste form, you have uh, PTFE best based um, or fluorine based paint sealants like this. So basically a man-made synthetic formula in a lab that usually will give you at least twice the durability of your traditional wax. So you're looking at five to six months for most paint sealants. You can get them in a liquid form like this. This is the Jeskar Powerlock Plus. Uh, Jeskar is the American importer of uh, products. Um, well, this is the Powerlock Plus, but Jeskar is the company. And uh, in Europe, the um, the company that you get is Menzerna. There you go. So Menzerna and Jeskar, pretty much the same thing. If you have Powerlock in Europe by Menzerna, it's the same product. So polymer-based sealant. So again, you can hear uh, things like a synthetic paint sealant, a paint sealant, a polymer-based paint sealant, a PTFE sealant, a fluorine sealant. That they pretty much all mean the same thing. It's a synthetic synthetic paint protection and then you can get some in spray form like this uh, Optimum Polymer Technologies OptiSeal so a little goes a long way. All the products that I talk about today uh, I've probably already tested in many videos on my channel so you can go ahead and dig into those at a later time if you're more curious about one or the other. So what is the differences other than durability, right, between a paint sealant and a carnauba wax or a traditional wax? Basically, it's the durability. Once again, double the durability on average. There are many variables, but on average. And also the looks. So traditionally, a paint sealant will have a colder look. So a colder appearance to the finish. So the gloss isn't as warm looking. We all, you're often going to hear that if you watch detailing videos or if you're in the detailing community or you talk to your local detailer, for example, that warm glow that you get from organic products like Carnuba waxes. You're not going to find that necessarily in paint sealants because they have a colder appearance. They're synthetic lab-made products. So you're trading off a bit of that awesome gloss or glow. That doesn't mean that they're not glossy though. Don't get me wrong. Paint sealants still give you that gloss and slickness as well. It's just different in the appearance. So what a lot of people like to do is to combine the best of both worlds. So they're going to apply a base layer of their favorite paint sealant so on the surface, right, and this is for the durability, so always apply the most durable product first on the clear coat. And then on top of that, they're going to top the paint sealant with their choice of a carnauba wax, whether it's a liquid, a paste, or a spray form. And that way they're going to get the durability of the sealant and they're going to get the gloss or the warmness, that warm glow out of the carnauba wax on top. So we're coloring, we're, we call that layering. So you're stacking your protection and that way you're getting the best of both worlds. So now, Fast forward to the uh, mid 2010, so probably around 2014, 2015, we started to see, uh, it started maybe a bit before that for professionals, but for the public around that time, 2014, 15, 16, ceramic coatings started to uh, come on the market. And what these are basically, you're probably known to seeing them like this CarPro Sequartz UK 3.0. So it's this glass bottle, right? This glass vial and inside there's this liquid or resin. 
And uh, there's solvent carriers that are gonna help you transfer that liquid solution or that resin onto your clear coat, and it will eventually harden. They typically have some curing times, so anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. Some of them require 48 hours to fully harden uh, on your clear coat, and the curing process still continues after that, but usually the first 24 hours uh, are critical, so no exposure to water or rain when you apply these, and uh, that way they can cure, and then it continues the curing process for another a week to two weeks, but you can drive in the element after the first 24 hours. So this resin basically uh, is SiO2 based. That is silicon dioxide or silica. And that chemistry basically creates a semi permanent form of paint protection on top of your clear coat. Uh, typically it's uh, two to three times harder than your clear coat. So basically see that as a layer on top that uh, is harder than your clear coat and is gonna give you the UV protection, is gonna give you gloss, is gonna give you that slickness, tons of chemical resistance. So traditionally, uh, the majority of ceramic coatings are going to resist uh, product chemicals on the pH scale anywhere from pH 2, pH 3, all the way up to pH 11, 12, and 13. So a very broad range of resistant to chemicals. That means you can use higher pH level shampoos on these. Uh, you can use iron removers, tar removers, no problems, mineral deposit removers, and you're not going to harm the product that's underneath. So that is key. They're the most durable form of paint protection as well compared to waxes. So remember, carnauba wax is typically one to three months durability. Paint sealants, you're looking at five to six months on average. And now consumer grade ceramic coatings, you get anywhere from one to two plus years of protection. A lot of new ones uh, allow you to go upwards of five years now that the public can purchase. If I look at the uh, Adams Graphene ceramic coating, for example, that'll give you upwards of seven plus years, according to the company. We still need lots of years to test these in real world conditions because a lot of them are new products, uh, but they're gonna give you years of protection if you maintain them properly. So every two to three months, it is recommended on ceramic coatings to apply a silica spray sealant. So basically it is the spray form equivalent of a coating. So silicon dioxide based or SiO2 based, but in a less concentrated form. And we have an example right here. So this is the last coat version 2.0. You can use this as a standalone paint protectant, by the way. So for the people who don't necessarily have the time experience, uh, time or experience needed to apply these or the budget for the more expensive uh, ceramic coatings, because these can cost quite a bit more compared to paint sealants or waxes. Well, the industry has come up with spray versions. So you're looking at five to six months of protection, typically out of spray products. Some of them can go all the way up to 10 or 12 months of protection. And uh, you can use these basically as standalone. So you spray on, you wipe off and you're good to go, especially things like this. There's no curing time. You can drive off in the elements after you apply, or you can use this as maintenance toppers over your existing ceramic coatings. So the majority of the brands that release coatings, if I look at CarPro, Seacords UK 3.0, they have their own real product that they call. So this is a lighter version. So there's less concentration of SiO2 in there and you can use this to maintain the properties every two to three months. So you're replenishing the properties, you're boosting the properties, boosting gloss, boosting slickness as well, but you're ensuring that your coating is getting the best performance and durability out of the product. And so that's why they came out with these products. And another evolution that they have now that is quite popular on the market, if you want the easiest to apply silica-based paint protection or ceramic-based protection, are spray-on rinse-off formulas like this Gion Wet Coat. So basically when you're done washing your car, after you rinsed it while it's still wet with water, you're going to spray this on a panel and immediately rinse with your pressure washer or a garden hose if you have enough pressure out there, basically a good stream of water and uh, that's it, you added some protection. You're looking at in real world conditions for the majority of these types of products, spray on rinse off, uh, two, three, four months of protection, but it's again, super easy, a few seconds, you do the uh, whole round of your vehicle and boom, you have some protection. So that's a new evolution of the uh, ceramic coating as well. And you can use this to maintain your ceramic coating. So pretty much, again, all the companies, if I look at CarPro, they have Hydro 2 Light, which is a spray-on rinse-off formula. You get this Gion Wet Coat that is spray-on rinse-off. And you can interchange paint protection products, right? So if you have a ceramic coating by CarPro, if you want to use something else as a topper, you can go ahead and use things like the Last Coat or Gion Wet Coat, Basically, as long as you're keeping it within the uh, chemistry compatibility, so as long as it's silica-based, it's fine to do. Uh, a lot of people ask me, is it okay to apply a carnauba wax on top of a ceramic coating? 
Although there are some exceptions, the typical answer is no. It's not because it's detrimental to the ceramic coating if you apply a wax on top. It's because if you apply either a traditional paint sealant or a wax on top of a ceramic coating, you're going to mask the properties of the ceramic coatings. Because one of the biggest properties that ceramic coatings and graphene coatings have are self-cleaning capabilities. That doesn't mean that your car cleans itself. No, no, no. Uh, what that means is it makes the vehicle a lot easier to clean during your maintenance washes because dirt has a lot less of a tendency to stick on it due to the hydrophobic properties, the water beading and the water sheeting. So you get ultra tight water beads and a very quick sheeting off rate of the water, which means the vehicle is quicker to dry and uh, it makes the experience a lot better. So if you're applying a traditional wax or sealant on top, you're going to be masking those properties because you're getting the properties of whatever is on top, right? Whatever is the last protection, those are the properties you get from. And traditionally, while well, coatings have much better hydrophobic properties, and chemical resistance compared to the other two forms of traditional paint protections. Uh, another thing that is of note, when you're applying a ceramic coating, there's a lot more prep involved. So for somebody who wants the uh, least amount of time to spend on a vehicle, probably a wax or a paint sealant is the way to go because essentially you simply have to wash your car and basically once it's dry, you can apply these products and you're good to go. Now, ceramic coatings and graphene coatings are a bit different because you need a lot more prep. First of all, you have to ensure that there is no previous protection on the paint. So if your car has a wax or a paint sealant on it, you cannot apply a ceramic coating or a graphene coating on top because it won't bond to the surface. Coatings need to bond directly to a virgin clear coat. So that means you have to go through a wash process, then do a chemical decontamination with an iron remover to remove the iron particles like brake dust, to remove any tar deposits as well. Then you're going to move on to a mechanical decontamination during a, using a clay bar, a clay mitt, or a clay towel. So the clay media is going to remove any further embedded contamination from the clear coat, pull that out so you get a clean surface to work with. And then you're going to go ahead and do machine polishing steps. If your paint has a lot of swirls and scratches, you're going to start with a compound and finish with a polish step. And if there's only light swirls or very light scratches or just some light marring, uh, then you can use just a polish basically to perfect the surface because you're going to be sealing that in right with the coatings for many, many years. So you want to take as much time as possible. Once you're done polishing, you're also going to have to do an IPA prep uh, or a paint prep step to remove any polishing oils. So basically an isopropyl alcohol mix that that's going to strip away all the oils and residue from the polishing stages and again make that surface squeaky clean and then you're ready to start to apply either the ceramic coating or the graphene coating. So a lot more prep involved. However, you're getting a lot back because you're going to have protection that is going to last for years. Contrary to these guys, which you have to reapply every other month or every few months, right? So keep that in mind. You're getting much more chemical resistance, uh, higher resistance as well on the scale of um, differences in temperatures. So the products that resist the most, the extreme temperatures from super cold weather to very hot weather are coatings. So either ceramic or graphene, those are the ones who have the best resistance to the outdoor elements, that is for sure. And they've been proven for years now, especially for ceramic coatings. Now, don't get me wrong, the more you prep your paint, even for before applying a wax or sealant, the better results you're going to get. Think about it. If your surface is very dirty and contaminated and you're applying protection on there, well, it's not going to bond as well to the surface, right? So the more time you spend perfecting, decontaminating and cleaning your paint before you apply any type of paint protection, the better the product is going to perform and the longer it's going to last. So take those tips from from Pan the Organizer. And by the way, I have a tutorial on how to apply waxes and paint sealants on my channel. And I also have a very popular tutorial or two on how to apply ceramic coatings and how to apply a graphene coating. So check those out. You're going to have, uh, well, you're going to be able to witness basically what the steps are so you can guys can visualize all the steps and the products that need to be used to do a proper job. And any of these, these are all consumer grade products, by the way. Uh, they're all quite simple to use. They're not as complicated as some pro grade products products out there that require product, uh, machines like infrared curing lamps and uh, complex knowledge of flashing times and curing times and all that kind of stuff. 
So if you were scared to apply ceramic coatings, note that they've evolved to a point where they're getting a lot easier to apply now. And uh, even if you're a beginner out there, there are some that are so, so easy to apply. I highly recommend, by the way, that you check out my uh, annual Car Detailing Products Awards video, where I select my top three products for each category. And uh, those I've been, well, I vetted and of course, and I've tested, and those are the ones I recommend the most to you guys. So the latest edition being the 2021 Car Detailing Products Awards on my channel. So after ceramic coatings were released uh, in, let's say, 2014, 2015 is when we started seeing them to, to begin to be uh, popular with the population, so for the uh, consumer. Well, two years ago, so roughly in 2019, 2020, let's say, they uh, started releasing graphene coatings. So again, you're going to find them in glass bottles like this. And the difference is, if you can see the liquid in there, compared to a traditional ceramic coating, this is a blue bottle, but inside there it's a clear liquid, hopefully as you can see. The difference with graphene-based products, if you look at the bottle, well, there's black stuff in there. So what they do is they start with typically a ceramic base. So the ceramic coatings that you're used to, and what they're gonna do is add graphene oxide or reduced graphene oxide, RGO, that's how it's known in the chemistry world. And the benefits to that, we're not going to get into the debate of our uh, graphene coatings, snake oil or whatnot, because uh, the majority of them are all good ceramic coatings and they're adding things into them. So that reduced graphene oxide, what they promise the brands is that it is supposed to reduce the chances of getting water spotting. That's the main difference that you're getting with graphene additive inside compared to a traditional ceramic coating because the caveat or the, uh, let's say, only for me negative point of ceramic coatings is that they're a bit more prone to water spotting issues because of the hydrophobic nature. So all those beautiful beads when they sit on top of the uh, the paint, eventually when they dry off because of the sun's UV rays or when there's a lot of heat, that water evaporates and can leave behind some mineral deposits that can etch through your clear coat if they're left there for a long time. Uh, but there's ways you can alleviate that with ceramic coatings by applying toppers on them. So a lot of them now, like if I look at CarPro, they have a thing called Gliss. So it's basically a super slick topper that helps reduce the chances of getting water spotting. So what the industry did now is basically well include all that in graphic graphene coatings like this one. But again, that's why this one here is called graphene ceramic coating. You're starting with a ceramic base and you're adding reduced graphene oxide in there to hopefully either um, one of two ways, reduce the surface temperature so you don't have as much water spotting or increase the hydrophobic properties even more. So you're getting a quicker sheeter rate and you're getting more aggressive water contact angles for the water molecules to be even rounder now compared to before so they can sheet off the paint quickly. And then again, you're reducing the chances of getting water spotting. That doesn't mean you're never gonna get, gonna get water spotting. So you have to take care, especially if you have hard water issues where you live. So regular maintenance of your paint uh, is very required. So I wash my car twice weekly, uh, but I would recommend at least once or twice, at least every month, do a proper maintenance. And then again, every two to three months, replenish your either graphene coating or ceramic coating with a booster spray to maintain the properties. So basically, again, I have videos that I made with a few chemists in the industry, reliable sources, that talk about the graphene chemistry and what's the new stuff that it brings, hopefully, in the industry. Uh, a lot of people, like when it was for ceramic coatings, they said, ah, oh, graphene is snake oil, it's not going to catch on. And fast forward two years later, uh, pretty much all the major brands now are dealing with graphene uh, for many different reasons. If you look at tire dressings, for example, sometimes it's not only for durability, but it's going to add a darkening effect to the tire, which is much desired. Uh, for coatings, it can be reducing the surface temperature or increasing the hydrophobic properties to have water stand less on the surface, sheet off quickly, and that way you're getting less chances of getting water spotting, those kinds of things. So if you like ceramic coatings, you can see graphene as an evolution of a ceramic coating. So it is a ceramic base just with additives inside there uh, to hopefully, according to the brands, once again, uh, give you some extra benefits. So see them as ceramic coatings plus, right? Ceramic coatings with something more inside there. And again, they're here to stay. Pretty much everybody is diving into this right now. And I think, uh, well, in the future, we're going to see even more of these products, especially if they get to a point run day where everybody can have pure graphene uh, applied on there. Graphene is supposed to be stronger than steel if we're talking about pure graphene. So you can imagine if they're able to bring it down to a mono layer of those carbon atoms inside uh, pure graphene and to make it viable and easily accessible to create these products, the paint protection, 
innovation is going to be second to none. So I'm looking forward to what these brands are going to be coming up with in the future. But like for ceramic coatings, they also have spray versions of uh, graphene now. So you have like this 303 graphene nano spray coating. Like for anything, when you get the spray version, you're getting a more diluted form compared to these full-blown glass bottle versions. So they're not gonna be as durable. Typically for uh, the spray versions, you're looking anywhere from six to 12 months of real world protection, and uh, but they're easier to apply. So there's always a compromise to be made, right? So more expensive, but can last many, many years, but more difficult to apply, to remove, and you have to worry about things like flashing times and curing times and those kinds of things, but the results are awesome. And this one here, less expensive, much quicker and easier to apply, a lot less prep required and uh, more accessible if you don't have the experience. So it's up to you guys to make the choice. What do you prefer or what are you feeling comfortable working with? So some people start with spray versions and when they're comfortable with the application, well, eventually then they move on to the full blown glass bottles. And when you guys do that, you can't move back to anything else because it is just awesome. So now that we understand the differences between waxes, paint sealants, ceramic coatings, and graphene coatings, we're gonna answer the question, which is the best form of paint protection? Now, there isn't a universal answer to that, guys. I can give you my opinion as what I believe is the best form of paint protection for me, but ultimately it depends on many factors. So which environment are you on? Uh, do you drive a weekend driven car or a daily driver? What kind of protection are you looking for? What experience do you have as a detailer? So are you a beginner? So maybe a wax would be more suited to you, something easy to apply or a paint sealant, or are you a bit more advanced? So if you've applied a wax in the past, if you know how to take care of your car, well, I'd strongly recommend that you move on to ceramic coatings and graphene coatings because they are a lot more durable. So if uh, money is all that is important to you, you want the less expensive products, typically sealants and waxes are the less expensive way to go but now we have spray forms of ceramic coatings and graphene coatings that are very very affordable so you're looking at probably anywhere from 20 to 45 or 50 usd so they're still way under 100 bucks because if you look at these glass bottles these are getting up there in price so you're looking at uh, 50 plus 60 70 100 dollars usd depending on 30 mil or 50 mil bottles eh by the way uh, with a 30 mil ceramic coating bottle you can typically apply two coats on two average sized cars uh, if you have a big truck uh, or and you want to do multiple layers on multiple big trucks we'll get probably a 50 mil bottle or two 30 mil bottles depending again on how many um, uh, vehicles you're coating and how big they are but yeah, so who does the ceramic coating or the graphene coating go for? Well, basically, if um, your budget allows you to get a more expensive product, if you're tired of applying a wax every two to three months and you want something that is going to be durable through the years, right? Years of durability in real world conditions. If you want something that has the most chemical resistance, so if you want the best durability out there, not only an amount of years, but chemically as well, if you want the best levels of gloss, if you want the best hydrophobic properties, so water beating and water sheeting, well, look nowhere else but coatings. And regardless, if you get a ceramic or graphene, they pretty much perform either identically. And if there are differences for graphene coatings, it's probably just because the coating also evolved the ceramic base to a point where it got that much better. So don't get confused between graphene and ceramic. Consider them the same. We're going to call them coatings. So whether you get a ceramic coating or a graphene coating, once again, those are basically what I believe, or in my opinion, are the best forms of paint protection. Again, because they will last for years. They have the best chemical resistance. They probably have the best UV protection as well out of the bunch. They're the hardest on the paint, so the most durable as far as longevity is concerned and chemical resistance and will give you amazing self-cleaning properties. So yes, waxes and sealants do help keep the car cleaner and make it easier to wash, but the best self-cleaning properties are definitely from ceramic coatings and graphene coatings. And if you've applied them or have seen vehicles with those, those are the types of cars that, or vehicles that when they're coated with a coating, uh, ceramic or graphene, even when they're dirty, you look at them in a parking lot and you say, wow, that car is still shiny and still looks pretty clean, right? Well, that's because it's properly coated and those self-cleaning properties help keep uh, dirt and grime 
away. It doesn't keep the car 100% clean, but it makes it a lot easier to clean during your maintenance washes. And I think that's a very cool thing to have. So you don't have to worry about the paint protection as much. So you do it once, you do it right, and you have years of carefree protection. Basically a slight maintenance every two to three months to maintain that protection. And uh, that's pretty much it. And who doesn't enjoy when they clean their car at the end when they're done the wash and drying process to add a bit of uh, gloss and slickness, right? Right not. So that's when it's perfect to use a topper, a maintenance topper or a quick detail spray, something that is compatible to help boost that protection and add a bit of more gloss and slickness. So is waxing and paint sealants, uh, is waxes and paint sealants dead? No, they're not. A lot of people still, again, enjoy that hand application process uh, every other month. It's very therapeutic for some. Uh, and if we're looking at just that warm glow, that carnauba waxed look, that shine, that organic, it's very hard to describe, but if you want the ultimate, so if your vehicle is for cars and coffee, if you have it in a museum or a car uh, exposition, or you're at a car show, something like that, or it's in your collection, or you just want like that ultimate glossy look but that warm appearance it is definitely a carnauba wax that will do that for you even more so than ceramic coatings ceramic coatings do give off fantastic gloss but it's more a candy like appearance so more a synthetic gloss uh, these are some of the glossiest products by the way so if you're looking at ceramic coatings or graphene coatings the gloss is nuts that's what i have on my own car and it's insane. But if you're looking more of that traditional, warm, old school kind of feel and uh, nice gloss to it, well, nothing beats Carnuba waxes. So again, if you like hand application, a less expensive product, uh, you love the process and you want something natural that looks natural, Carnuba waxes, you wanna combine the best of both worlds. So you want a bit more durability out of your Carnuba wax, where you're gonna first apply a base layer of a paint sealant or synthetic polymer paint sealant and top that off with your wax. So you're gonna get five to six months of protection and still get the added benefit of the warm gloss and glow from the carnauba waxes but uh, for me once again if you want the ultimate in paint protection if you've been watching my videos by the way you probably have all the knowledge you need right now to uh, start applying ceramic coatings you will never look back and if you want to start uh, on an easier note well just start with some spray versions so there's a lot of spray products today that are silica based or SiO2 based there's a lot of silica uh, there's a lot of uh, graphene spray coatings as well on the market so those are a lot easier and quicker to apply you don't have to worry about as many things during the application as you would with traditional ceramic coatings so that's a great introduction to the coatings world you're getting a lot of the same benefits just less durability so again 6 to 12 months with a spray form and when you're looking Looking at these glass bottles you're looking at many many years of durability on your paint so guys again i'll leave links to these products in the description under the video for you guys to check them out don't forget to uh, share like and subscribe so share this video with friends and family click the like button smash that like button it's important for the algorithm for youtube that way it shows them that you guys are interested in watching my videos and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button that's found under this video and that way uh, you'll never miss my future video so you can continue to learn more about car detailing all the products equipment tips tricks and techniques so guys don't forget keep it tight keep it clean and i'll see you on the next one